thought about this introduction of, of Gloria today. I thought, okay, I can tell you about all of her New York Times bestsellers, and I can tell you about the amazing career she had at Planned Parenthood, and I can tell you about all the leadership, but I think you all know that. So what I decided I wanted to do is I actually just wanted to say thank you to Gloria, because Gloria, you have paved the way for so many women to take the lead, to become leaders, um, to become kind leaders, to become thoughtful leaders. I wouldn't be where I am had you not done some of the work that you did. So on behalf of everybody in the room and everybody on Zoom, I want to thank you. And we are here today to celebrate your new book. So please join me in welcoming Lori Felt. Thank you. What I'd like to say is I think bookstores are first responders and uh, are essential, essential to life. So I think we should give Cindy and Changing Hands a big round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for helping us stay sane during a pandemic because we couldn't do it without you for sure. So I, I'm, I'm more than a little nervous because this is my first in-person event in a year and a half. <laughs> and thank you all so much for being here. I uh, want to start with, with where I start in the book, Intentioning. Hashtag intentioning. It was a beautiful Arizona day last January, a day that looked like this, except not so hot. It was just perfect. I was out hiking with a friend and I tripped on a little something and broke my wrist. I'd never had a broken bone before. And I realized afterward that I should have recognized it as an omen that I started calling last year the year of broken bones and it turned out to be the year of broken almost everything um, because it, it, it as soon as we had finished the reason I had been in Arizona at that particular time was because Take the Lead had our last in-person event which was a power up conference uh, and it was fantastic it was on it was on leap day because I had said it had to be on leap day because that was the most feminist day of the calendar. Uh, and, uh, I, and so we did that on leap day and literally the next day the world started closing down. And so the book that I had started to write about a year before that turned into not a totally different book but certainly a much richer book in many respects. Because in this past year and a half, we have all experienced so much, so much sadness, so much grief, so much change, so much uh, new awareness, so much uh, of, of things that we've never experienced before. Some good, some bad, some just new innovations that, that occur. Because Disruptions like a pandemic do this for us. It, it, it's, a, it's a time of disruption and it's a time of rebirth. And both of those are important for a variety of different reasons. So when I had started to write intentioning, and I had already invented the word intentioning, by the way, I'm waiting for it to appear in the dictionary. I'm hoping that it will be the word of the year next year. Uh, but I decided that it needed to be an active verb. There needed to be an active verb for the word intention, uh, not just a noun that sits there, but an active verb that says, we're doing it. And that's part of what we'll talk about. I had been interviewing women for about a year, and I knew in my mind that I wanted to write a book that would tell their stories, and around their stories, that I would create a new set of leadership tools that I could, um, could teach and share with women. Um, how many of you have read No Excuses or seen No Excuses? Some of you I know have, many of you have. I see, because there are so many friendly faces here. I know you have. So the last book that I wrote was called No Excuses, Nine Ways Women Can Change How We Think About Power. And in it, I was exploring what I had found was one of the linchpins to why women hadn't reached parity in leadership in any sector. In fact, we were, we were just at 20, per, we were under 20% when I started writing No Excuses, uh, which is now about 10 years ago. 
And I realized that there's such different socialization between men and women around power. And our experience of power is so different. And our uh, relationship with power is so different as a result that that was one of the reasons why we hadn't actually broken through. We had better education than men already. 57% of college degrees, by the way. Uh, we, the business case was clear that that uh, companies that had more women in their leadership made more money. The uh, women were, had the power of the purse. We were buying 85% of the consumer goods and products, or at least making the decisions for the family. And yet we were not using that power. Why? And so I found that if I could, if I could help women shift the thinking about power from the old oppressive narrative that we've been taught, which is about wars and fighting and scarce resources and there's never enough and if I take a piece, there's less for you. Uh, that, so I have to really just, I have to fight you for my little piece of that pie. That uh, there, there's a good reason why women haven't embraced that notion of power because we've borne the brunt of a lot of really negative aspects of it over the years. And as soon as we could start talking about power as being a, a, like a hammer, whatever you do with it. It's, you can break something with it or you can build something with it. And it's what you do with it. And so you can take that concept of power and turn it into being the generative and innovative and creative and positive idea of being the power to, the power to. And then when, when I would talk to women about this, I would see masks fall off of their faces. I mean, like as though they were masks. I mean, now we're really wearing real masks, but uh, then it was more like their faces changed and they became calmer and more open. And so I realized that this was something that needed to go beyond just my, what I could do. And I actually started being asked to do workshops using that theory and the nine leadership power tools. And I, well, you know, I would hear from women that they had made advances that they would not have done otherwise. So, well, it didn't take long before I then co-founded Take the Lead, a nonprofit organization with the mission of gender parity in leadership in all sectors by 2025. Why 2025? Do you know how long, do you know how long that people say it will take in the US? Anybody know? 70 years is the most optimistic. The World Economic Forum says it will be 150 to 300 years. So why do I say 2025? Well, number one, because I, feel, I believe you have to put a stake in the ground. You have to be able to measure towards something. You may not get there, but you'll get further than if you hadn't. But honestly, I've been doing this work for a long time, as Cindy said. And uh, if I could live another 70 or 150 years, I would. But the odds are not real great, even with the best doctor in town who's here uh, to, to help me out. I don't think I could live that long. So, so we have to do it by 2025. So everybody okay with that? Okay, all right, good. I figured we'd have a, a willing crowd here today. As I worked with women and, and taught women over the last 10 years, what I also came to realize was that after I have helped women embrace their power and see power as a positive thing that they can use to advance themselves or to do whatever they wanna do in life, that there's the next big question that has to be asked. And the next big question is the power to what? The power to what? To what end do you want to use that power? To what end? What is your purpose? What is your intention? Uh, how do you want to choose to use that power? So that was the inception and the, the concept that I started with.